As you may know, I'm a Java developer, but I've been using JavaScript on and off for the past year or so on Social Leader, and I thought it would be a fun video to share my experience in using and learning JavaScript from the perspective of a Java developer. But let's start off there. What is my experience with Java? So I learned programming using Java, then switched over to C++, and then back to Java. So I built a lot of little terminal applications and all those little learning programs. I built Hangman, some little games in Terminal, Caesar Cypher, a lot of that. And I also did some light, light Android development in a mobile development class back in school and then created some artificial intelligence programs. So I built a Sokoban solver in Java with a few different ways to go about solving it using BFS, DFS, greedy BFS, A star algorithms um, with different particular heuristics and whatnot. All that I think is on my GitHub repo if you want to see more about that but all of that was in java and then a lot of my processing projects which processing uses the java language there's processing like 3d or something like that which uses javascript but when i recreated tetris you know a tetris clone and then wrote a machine learning algorithm to beat tetris and then i did the same thing with an arcade game breakout if you've heard of that those are two videos on my channel and that was all in java but of course my main usage of java was when i was a professional software engineer building enterprise applications with typescript on the front end java on the back end with spring and a lot of other frameworks on the front end back end databases all that stuff for that full stack app but yeah i've used java extensively and as a java developer i used typescript on the front end not JavaScript. So really my only experience that I would consider experience is over this past year. I've been working on this web app, Social Leader, building it with the Mern stack. And as you may know, the Mern stack has React JavaScript on the front end, Node.js, which you use JavaScript on the back end. So basically the only language I'm using is JavaScript. I am well aware that you can use TypeScript alongside JavaScript. That's not the point here. I wanted to try to just go with JavaScript because why not? But I will say my view of JavaScript will be distorted because this is like the only project that I've really worked on aside from like little tiny projects that I've worked on, but I don't count those. This is really the only project, my only JavaScript project. So I'm not going to be sure if I do something a particular way, if I'm one using bad practice or if I'm doing that a particular way because that's how it's required by Node.js or React or just know that it'll be skewed and distorted because of my particular usage of JavaScript and not, not like a general usage. I don't know if that makes any sense, but remember I'm very green when it comes to JavaScript. So if I say JavaScript can't do this, but Java can do this, or this is how you do something in JavaScript and you're a JavaScript developer and you're like, no, that's wrong. Well, look, I'm sure that'll happen. I'm not very good with JavaScript. Just know that. So don't take any advice from me. This is just my experience using it. I didn't take a course or class on JavaScript. I just kind of dove in head first and started hacking things together to see if it would work. And it may work, but it may also be very inefficient and the wrong way to do it, but it works. So, <laughs> okay. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that little disclaimer out there because I know there are gonna be some JavaScript pros in here watching this video saying that's not how you do that. I know, well, I don't know, but so my experience with JavaScript as a Java developer, there are some obvious technical differences. So like Java, of course, is object oriented programming language, whereas JavaScript is like an object oriented dynamic scripting language, <laughs> if you will, because it's not class based object oriented, but it's still object oriented. And of course they're meant for different purposes with Java. It's like a general programming language. When you're talking about web development, you use it on the back end. and JavaScript was made to use on the front end and you could write scripts with it. And now you can use it on the back end with the help of stuff like Node.js. So like if you're new watching this, you don't really know much about Java or JavaScript. Think of it more of car and carpet, like car and carpet. They both start off with car, but they're not really the same thing. I mean, that's a bit of a stretch considering Java and JavaScript are still programming languages, but you get the idea. It's not like JavaScript is a predecessor to Java or vice versa. They just both happen to be programming languages and that's really where these similarities end. But I mean, we could go into technical differences all day given the statement I just made. So let me just share a little bit of things that I noticed that were pretty different from Java and JavaScript on just a regular usage. The first thing I'll hop into are data types. 
because when it comes to JavaScript, it just seems like you can make anything a let, you know, some sort of variable, and <laughs> you can let it figure it out a runtime. Whether it's a string or Boolean or whatever, it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, couldn't you just in JavaScript say let coffee equals this is good coffee, you know, as a string, and then later on say coffee equals 22 as an integer, and it'll work just fine? Because in Java, that's not how it works. You have to say string coffee equals this is good coffee. And then if later in the code you say coffee equals 22, it's gonna throw you a compilation error. We just can't do that. And as a matter of fact, I like it that way. I like when things are specific. This is a string, this is a Boolean, this is an integer. No if, ands, or buts about it. This is what it is and what it will always be. And if you try to make it something else, well then we're gonna give you an error. So that's one thing that I like better about Java and that I really noticed with JavaScript is that they just kind of, eh, it'll figure it out a runtime, whatever, it don't really matter. Now in Java, one of the main things is inheritance. And if I want to put it simply, you can think of inheritance as you have a bike, right? You make a, a super class as a bike. That's a broad term for everything that falls under that. Dirt bikes, motorcycles, bicycles, but we're going to call the broad term bike. And then under that, you can have attributes and methods. So, you know, it has two wheels, it has a seat, handlebars, whatever. And then in our subclass where you can talk about dirt bikes and we'll say class dirt bike extends bike. So when we create a new dirt bike and we give the dirt bike, the dirt bike specific attributes in this subclass, we can also reference everything that it inherited from the super class of bike. That way we avoid the redundancy of having to type in all of these different classes that they have two wheels in a seat and handlebars. Instead, we just have the super class say all of that and then it extends into all of these subclasses. I hope that made sense. But in JavaScript, you have prototyping, which from my understanding is overall the same idea as inheritance, just in a less clean way, syntactically speaking. Because again, I'm pretty sure it does everything the same, but I just think it's weird syntax. It just makes more sense for me when you have dirtbike.wheels and it'll tell you that it has two wheels. It just makes more sense to me the Java way rather than the prototype JavaScript way. And honestly, I'm not sure that this is one of my biases. Obviously I'm biased towards Java because I'm a Java developer. That's what I know better. So I'm going to be used to that more than the JavaScript way. And I'll be averse to change from Java to JavaScript. But as a JavaScript developer, if you've ever used Java and you are familiar with the difference between prototyping and inheritance, would you disagree with me? I feel like inheritance is just a simpler way to do it. And another big part of Java is encapsulation. And I know there's like modules, encapsulation modules in JavaScript, but I'm not putting too much effort here because I just use Lombok. Along the way, I've just figured out a lot of different ways to go about making programming in Java easier and using these frameworks to my advantage. And I don't know exactly the best way to go about all of this stuff in JavaScript, if they have a lot of different frameworks and whatnot. So obviously, not only is my perception skewed on how I use JavaScript and it's in a MERN application, but also how I use Java and how I just kind of cheat around setters and getters using Lombok and, and then I use Makito for testing and whatnot. So I don't know, I guess I'll end it there. There are a few things that I noticed right off the bat and there's some other things that I just find easier in Java because of these different tools and frameworks that have been built on Java, but maybe there's an equivalent over there for JavaScript. Maybe Lombok and Makito work on JavaScript. I don't know, I've never tried. After further investigation, it appears that Lombok is purely Java, but they also have something that is JS Makito, which as they say here, is a mocking framework that tastes really good. It lets you write beautiful tests with a clean and simple API. I don't know if the same people behind Makito created this or if it's like a fork or whatever you wanna call it. Um, but hey, there you go. But I'll leave you with this because I know this video has been all over the place. JavaScript just isn't the type of coding I prefer, which is actually funny because I, I thought I would, but I don't. And I can probably almost guarantee you that 
it is because you typically enjoy doing things that you are good at more than doing things that you are bad at. And I am better at Java than I am at JavaScript. Therefore, I will enjoy Java more than JavaScript. So that's probably why I'm making this statement. But even aside from all that, it just doesn't scratch that itch that Java does. But I can't put my finger on it as to why. Not that it really matters. It's just something about it. And I can't figure it out. I like it, it's fine, I just don't like it as much. And again, it's probably because of my bias, but JavaScript, if you wanna learn JavaScript or you're a JavaScript developer, it's a great language. It is fun to use. It can do a lot of different things and there's a giant market for JavaScript developers. But also I have to mention that the same could be said for Java. It is an old programming language that is consistently updated even though everyone just codes in Java 8. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not going to ask you to like, but if you do want to subscribe because you like content like this, then hey, the subscribe button's down there. If you're already subscribed, then hit the bell so you get notified when I upload. But instead of liking the video, I mean, sure, like it, I'd appreciate it. But what I would actually prefer you do, especially if you're watching this early on, is go down to the comment section and find my automated comment from my dislike count code. That has the amount of views, likes, dislikes, ratio, last time the comment has been updated, and give it a thumbs up so we can keep that comment at the top of the comment description, since every time I edit it, it'll get unpinned. Sometimes I'll manly, manually pin some of these automated comments, but not always, so if it has more likes than every other comment, it'll stay at the top in theory, so let's try to make that happen. I'd appreciate it. Y'all have a good day.